I'm going to turn it over to Mike McGuinness, who is the Executive Officer of the National Academy of Medicine. Thank you, Victor. And uh, I would ask the panelists to come on up. and They're uh, putting out the name plates right now. Uh, let's have one more round of applause for, for that terrific panel. Uh, while uh, people are taking their seats, uh, let me just uh, offer a few uh, transition uh, comments, uh, if I may. Uh, first, we heard about some remarkably uh, transformative opportunities, um, opportunities that are absolutely, uh, to underscore the word, vital uh, for uh, health progress in the nation. Uh, and uh, a common theme that we heard uh, uh, describing uh, those opportunities was that they were shared aspirations, uh, which is also, I think, an important dimension of the Vital Directions activity. Uh, and when you think about it, uh, it's not surprising that they're shared aspirations. The notions of paying for value, empowering people, activating communities, connecting care, measuring what matters most, modernizing skills, accelerating real world evidence, advancing science. Those are issues that uh, seem intuitive in many ways. Uh, they're issues that clearly each of us would identify as relevant and important uh, and in, as vital. They're not new issues. We have new solutions, but what's really important to underscore is how far we are uh, from what needs to be in each of those dimensions. We're about 180 degrees uh, apart from where we need to be on each of those dimensions. When you think about where we are now, a system that is dominantly fee-for-service, um, a system uh, in which for three millennia, we've basically had uh, the patient-clinician interaction be unidirectional, uh, a system in which um, care is fundamentally fragmented as a result of the way it's grown up, uh, a system in which there is a crushing uh, measurement burden uh, that has exploded onto the scene in many ways and disrupted uh, the um, smooth workings of many clinician organizations. A system in which we have a division, a strong division between the medical care dimensions and the social service dimensions. Um, a system in which um, rather than capturing every clinical data point for continuous learning and new knowledge generation, we capture virtually no clinical data points uh, 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 for uh, new knowledge gener generation. What's important to underscore about vital directions is that even though we have a distance to travel, we do now have, unlike in many cases 10 years ago, just 10 years ago, we have the, the means to um, uh, to address each of these issues much more effectively than a relatively short time ago. And we're fortunate now to have with us here um, the heads of stakeholder organizations that are essential uh, in order to uh, make that kind of progress, to take on that heavy lift, uh, if you will. Uh, people who represent leadership from patients and doctors and health systems, public health, states, information technology, and knowledge uh, generation uh, and management. Um, these are the folks who will, uh, are already uh, and will be uh, leading the charge, working with their stakeholder communities uh, to, uh, and, and all of us, uh, to bring about the change uh, that is uh, necessary for the transformation that's possible. Uh, Sally Oaken, uh, I'll just mention each of them, uh, uh, and then uh, we'll come back, and each of them will give um, uh, five minutes of their views on the, uh, on the possibilities that are inherent 
uh, and envisioned in vital directions, as well as um, how it relates to their organizational activities and uh, what barriers uh, need to be overcome and how to overcome them. And then we'll come back uh, with a Q&A session afterwards. But first, we're going to hear from uh, Sally Oaken, who heads uh, Policy and Patient Safety at Patients Like Me, which is a personalized health network uh, that helps people find new treatment options, connect with others, uh, and take action to improve their outcomes and contribute uh, data for research. Uh, that we also have Georges Benjamin, who is the CEO of the American Public Health Association, uh, the nation's oldest and largest organization of public health professionals. He's also a former Secretary of Health for the state of Maryland. We've heard already a lot about uh, the important role of states and communities. Uh, we have Toby Go Cosgrove, who is uh, the CEO and President of the Cleveland Clinic. Uh, many of you have uh, seen uh, Toby uh, in a variety of public fora because of the leadership that Cleveland Clinic has uh, in identifying ways to build a continuous learning health system within uh, the Cleveland Clinic uh, as a model for others. And he has firsthand insights on the, uh, both the opportunities and the challenges. We also have Judy Faulkner, who is CEO and founder of Epic, uh, a company she started in 1979, I heard the other day, with two half-time employees. It's now uh, the uh, electronic health record uh, server uh, for 200 million Americans, uh, the largest uh, uh, EHR uh, vendor in the nation, and I assume in the world as well, Judy. Uh, we have uh, Deborah DeSanzo, who is the general manager for IBM Watson, uh, and uh, has a distinguished career working at the intersection of healthcare and technology prior to uh, joining IBM Watson, she was CEO of Philips uh, Healthcare. We have Jim Madera, uh, who is the CEO of the American Medical Association, uh, and also a previously dean uh, and vice uh, and head of the healthcare delivery system at the University of Chicago uh, Medical School, uh, and also uh, a distinguished uh, researcher and clinician uh, at uh, Harvard. Uh, and Emory prior to that. And we have Hamie Tourson, uh, who is uh, an attorney and, and is now uh, working as director of the health division at the National Governors Association. Again, a critical ally and leader uh, for the progress uh, that we all hope to see. Um, I'll just make one more uh, comment about ground rules uh, as we move into the Q&A session. Uh, there are uh, 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 we're going to come to Q&A right after the uh, panelists speak. And the, the only th the three ground rules uh, for Q&A, just to preview, are one, that you identify yourself, uh, two, brevity is the watchword, and three, just to remind that our focus is not on discussing the issues of uh, coverage uh, that is in the political arena, but on the evidence-based opportunities transformational opportunities in vital directions uh, holds. Sally, 